Well, the following property for sequences and calculating limits has to do with a property that is called continuity. And we'll, uh, I'll try to avoid a, a, a detailed definition, but a function on a closed interval, f, is called continuous. Yeah, it's called continuous if you yeah, if it's graph, yeah, you try to sketch the graph of the function f, then this graph can, can be sketched without removing a pencil from the paper. Yeah, so accept the fact that this is not a very precise definition, but it will do for the moment. Yeah, so I have a function and I want to uh, uh, sketch its graph. For instance, I have the function fx is x squared on the interval 0, 1. Then this function is continuous on this interval. Why is that? Well, here we have the axis and the yellow line is drawn without taking the pencil from my tablet in this case. Another example is the unshaped function, which rounds off numbers to the nearest uh, largest, uh, uh, larger int integer. And this function is not continuous. Well, it's a kind of step function, right? In minus 2, it takes on the value of minus 2. And if we're slightly above minus 2, then it would go to minus 1. And if we are slightly above minus 1, we go to 0, etc., etc. So we have a step function, and typically this is a non-continuous function, since we need a lot of jumps. So a function that requires a jump, if you, uh, if you require a jump, then actually you cannot sketch the function without taking the pencil from the paper. So this function is not continuous. So once we know what continuity of a function means, then we may use this to find other limits in the, same, in the following sense. Suppose that f is a continuous function. So this is a function which is actually has a continuous graph in a sense. And suppose that we have a sequence which is in the domain of the function f. So actually, this means that a n can be used as the argument of f. So I can always calculate the f of a n. And suppose that this sequence has a limit l, which also belongs to the domain of f. Then we may calculate the limit for n to infinity of f and substitute it uh, as an argument a n, we may calculate this limit as f of the limit, limiting behavior of a n, as f of l. So this is referred to as a direct substitution property. So instead of focusing the limit of f a n, we may just plug in the value l. Well, as an illustration, consider the following. So consider the limit of the following sequence. So the limit of, we consider a sequence 8n divided by n plus 1. So this is a n. And this, this sequence, ha, of course, has a limit by the subdividing by n. We see that this limit equals the limit of 8 divided by 1 plus 1 over n. And 1 over n tends to 0, so the limit equals 8. So then we take this as a sequence. Now, suppose we look at the following continuous function, which is just the cubic root. Then the cubic root is a continuous function, and we may calculate the limit of the cubic root of our sequence a n. So the cubic root of 8 n divided by n plus 1, simply by plugging in the limiting behavior of 8n divided by n plus 1, which is just the cubic root of 8 equals 2. So here's an illustration. Uh, 
Uh, so here we have the sequence, the cubic root of 8n divided by n plus 1 for n equals 1 to 40. And we see that there's a tendency to the line y equals 2. Yeah, that's the line here that we put here in green. Yeah, this plot is derived by uh, Wolfram Alpha. You can find it in the web. You can use it for free.